monorail has gone too far. Immediately at 50 and not continuing on with repeated rewards. Yeah. They picked some of the worst activities to put in this. Uh huh. Star Rail system is so much easier, often taking a third of the time of dailies in Genshin or less. Yep. It's nice, right? Every trailblazer who has unlocked the mail feature shall receive via, via mail one limited five star character <sighs> dock duration. Me! Hey, hey, it's, hey, Genshin stocks are not looking good, boys. It's crazy how it's been almost, guys. I'm going to break the news to you. It's been almost three weeks. Three weeks since this has happened, and people are still pissed. It's good. You might have guessed from the intro that this yep. isn't about Honkai Star Rail. Rather, it's about Genshin Impact. Yep. More the comparison okay. between the two. That's been going on ever since Honkai Star Rail's release. True. These two games have been compared in almost entirely Star Rail's favor since even before Star Rail was officially released to the public. Which people get upset about and they shouldn't. It's two games from the same company. If anybody says the game shouldn't be compared, they're stupid, especially due to the fact that we're talking about the implementation of Endgame and the implementation of rewards and the respect of their player bases. It doesn't matter if they're two different genres. Both of those two things are universal amongst either. So they should be compared. Quality of life features that people have been asking for in Genshin for years have been implemented in Honkai Star Rail yep. from the very start and continue to get added every single patch. Even things that people were already praising in Honkai Star Rail's favor have recently seen improvements including the battle pass and yep. the daily system, both being revamped to be way more user friendly. Meanwhile in Genshin, we recently saw the encounter point system, which many people really do love. It is a good thing for a lot of players out there, but for some players, it was left lacking a little. Yep. I myself was quick to criticize the system and point out flaws that I saw in it. I still use it every single day I can, and I love that it's included in the game. It's just it still is a little disappointing when even the improved version of Genshin's dailies were worse than Honkai Star Rail's daily system, yep. which just got massively improved in its most Again. recent patch. We have had the improved daily. And it's not because it's easier. Both of these things could be done, but they're just very resilient to not to. I, I know I'm not amongst the minority when I say the worst thing is, is because after three years of waiting for this game to pull, maybe three, two, who knows, uh, of waiting, it's probably three years, for this game to pull its head out of its ass, a lot of players, even if they are to do the fixes now, it's probably too late to be honest the system in honkai star rail for only one week so far but in that one week i have never failed to complete my entire run of dailies just by spending star rail's equivalent of resin and not even a full days just like a couple runs worth yep that's just dailies that is a relatively small thing in the grand scheme of things but it is something we do every day so having it be an annoying process is something you don't exactly want not to mention with the unknown state of the current chinese laws being proposed it's possible that just dailies won't even be around that much longer well the thing with the chinese laws is the guy who was in charge for making those has been since removed most likely nothing will come from those so anybody with bated breath waiting for those changes to be implemented sorry guys they're probably it's probably not coming in these games the battle pass going beyond 50 is anybody shocked that china wanted to for some reason not make less money is something I was asking for for a very long time and it's something that I always thought was missing given many other games have them even in games that have significantly more difficult battle passes to complete then bam not even one year of Honkai Star Rail and they already have this feature that's probably the one that stung me the most the thing is is I've played Genshin for so long and have amassed so many materials that I don't even really need those materials that much anymore so I am happy now that being said, that's a poor example. And the reason why that's a poor example is because that applies for both Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail. This shouldn't be held in opposition towards the other product. And uh, listen, guys, I understand everybody watching this video and watching the stream clearly understands that I have a huge bias for Honkai Star Rail, but I'm not going to be a bitch and call out one game when it when the other game does the exact same thing both of the games you have an abundance of resources that you're not using it's really not that big of a deal and we shouldn't be using that to criticize the other game to be honest be that it's in honkai star rail where i really do need those materials a lot because i just have so many characters i want to build for yep. the average player in genshin i imagine it's the ability to replay old events particularly the storylines in them that really upset them because that was a highly requested feature in genshin for basically as long as the game has been around 
Absolutely. The reason why Genshin Impact does this is because FOMO is one of the biggest driving factors for any consumer to actively play a video game to not miss out on events. They want to make people think, if you're not playing this, you are missing out. Honkai Star Wars said, eh, and we really don't care. The events will come and go. And to be honest, even after they leave, you can still play them. So to be honest, they come and they stay. It's actually really nice. And uh, we've been asking for this ever since the Golden Apple Archipelago event in Genshin Impact. Uh, back in version 1. Uh, which is insane, and yet it is still yet to be implemented. Even as early as 1.1 of Genshin Impact, we had a major event called Unreconciled Stars, which introduced a Fatui Harbinger in a small storyline yeah. related to the event. That I'll be real, I don't give a about Skarmish. I think this character is terrible. It is now currently unplayable in the game. I think there are many out there who wish they could say- That being said, it was a very important lore event, as well as the Albedo uh, homunculus event that I don't know how this is taken out. Like, this is one of the best stories in Hoyoverse. This story was so good and they just erased it. It's a shame. That this is an outlier and that was just one event. It was an early one and they learned their lesson and everything after that was just fluff, but that's really not the case. Every holiday season, we usually had some Dragon Spine event, which gave yep. Albedo major character development. Yep. At this point, it's hard to even say that if we were to get a feature like this in Genshin Impact, if it would even work retroactively, then there are those who prefer to play a little bit more casually, you know? Maybe they miss a few days. Maybe they like to take frequent breaks near the end of patches and and in that time, they miss so many dailies. They miss so much yep. resin. Well, in Honkai Star Rail, they added a reserve for your resin. So when it overcaps, it starts overfilling in the secondary pool at a much reduced rate. But you still. I remember when I originally realized that, okay, the, the Trailblazer energy is becoming a huge issue in Honkai Star Rail. And then I saw the leak for they're adding in a reserve. I remember I was so happy that day. I even teared up a little bit because I realized I'm not walking down that same path I had to walk down three years ago where I had to eat shit and smile. Like, dude, this company has handled this game so well, it's ridiculous still get something out of it. It's not just capping and going to waste. They even revamped the end game already. Now they didn't do any massive overhauls like a lot of us want done with Spiral Abyss at this point. What they have done is they've extended the duration at which you have to do it, made it an entirely new system, added variety to it, and not just variety. That variety was significant in improving Air Edition's viability in the end game by adding a game mode that is heavily AOE based, therefore just increasing the value of AOE characters. Which yep. is great when there's a whole path dedicated to that purpose now that is all well and good see now they need to make a something in uh genshin impact where they actually make geo viable for characters or people who don't have navia you know like imagine if they were to do that like this is the stage that's really good for ice characters this is the stage that's really good for geo because right now i mean like what is the f meta last time i played it was like use dendro or you're trolling that's 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 the last time i genuinely actually thought about the meta and then i was like oh i have no dendro characters so i guess i'll just I guess I'll just not play. Good, you know, great for Honkai Star Rail. I play both games. I'm happy with the improvements. But what really got me is the ability to skip earlier floors of the Memory of Chaos. Yep. You have completed most of these floors many times before. And now you can complete a later floor and get credit for everything. So good. It. It's so Good for Honkai Star Rail. Real happy to have that feature over there, but why? Why did the game that has auto battle need this before Genshin Impact did? I have completed floors 9 to 11 so many times that it is, there's almost no fun to be had in it anymore. My characters, even just average geared, you know, because I roll for so many characters, I try to build them all. Now, I think this take is also incredibly delusional because from the very beginning, as long as you clear one through eight on Spiral Abyss, then you get to go through nine through 12. Uh, I think this take is pretty poor and I'm not sure if he's aware of that. So this take, I, I, I don't agree with. No one is re one through eight, never refresh though. That's fair. That's a hundred percent fair. But the thing is, is that you can't just skip 9 through 11. I mean, sometimes stage 11 is harder than stage 12. I, I totally get why it's not skippable. There's a big difference between skipping 7 to do the last 3 or 5 versus just doing the last 4. It's just last 4. I don't think it's fair. 
really amazing. Even then, I can still just stomp everything in those floors. More often than not, they die before I can even start doing what the character is supposed to do. And I mean, if something is dying from Nouvellet's skill and his burst and you don't even get to use a charge attack, like what's the fun in that? I want to at least do one rotation. So like if that content is so easy, like just let us skip it. Give us credit for it when we've done it a hundred times. Let's just change the tone of this though, because the point of this video was not for me to just crap on everything Genshin is. True. The other thing is like, if you were to, if they were to be able to skip nine through 11 and just do stage 12, that's not really an experience. You know, they're, they're artificially extending it, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's really not that bad. It's really not that bad. What, why not skip 9 through 10? Because it's just, it's so short. I mean, in that regard, why doesn't Honkai Star Rail just let us only do 10, 11, 12? Why do we got to do 7, 8, and 9? You know, it, it, it's just minute, minuscule things at that point. It's not really, we don't really need to argue for that. Unless they, what they should do if he wants to argue this is skip seven through nine and then added 10 11 12 in spiral abyss sure but other than that i feel like it's a very minuscule thing to argue about my opinion doing and say that honkai star rail is better as so many like to do these days genshin has been adding a lot of nice things even if some of these features maybe should have come here a very long time ago yep. like the expedition renewal the good thing is is that uh this is one thing that we got that it is now better than honkai star rails version except for the fact that in honkai star rail you can do that from anywhere you don't have to go to one specific NPC, and that also applies for the dailies. So, you know, maybe give us that too. That'd be great. Leveling artifacts and stuff. That was drastically improved. The artifact yep. filtering system. I really don't know if anyone was really asking for this, and it is quite the complex system, and I do think it is a really useful tool to have. Numerous things, you know, improvements are always coming, and the one good thing I think that has come from- What the f*** is this? Is this a fan-made game, or is this an actual thing that people have done? Is this real? I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I've never seen this. What the, what the f is this? That's an event? Jesus Christ, this shit looks so Mickey Mouse, it's ridiculous. Honkai Star Rail is that the quality of life in Genshin was really stagnating for quite a long time. And it really does seem like the introduction of Honkai Star Rail has really lit a fire under them to improve the rate at which they give us these things. It's just, again, it's really weird when Honkai Star Rail gets improvements I don't think anybody was asking for. I mean, like, the daily system improvements are amazing. They are so much easier to complete when they were already so laughably easy compared to Genshin's. Who was asking for this? Why? Why? And, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that this event is bad. I'm sure it could be enjoyable. I mean, like, generally Genshin Impact's big events that people like are just shittier versions of other games. Kind of like how Genshin Impact is like, I mean, I'm not, not to be a dick here, guys, right? But like, I mean, generally Genshin Impact is a worse version of Breath of the Wild, right? But it's mobile, right? This looks like a worse version of a Mario Party minigame. And then another one that people really liked is Wind Trace, which is like a, a, a shittier version of Prop Hunt. Right? But they are still fun. It just, God, they look goofy. Why did you give us to us, especially when they just, they might be removed soon. Yep. Same with the battle pass. They removed dailies from the battle pass in Honkai Star Rail completely. And now you just have a spend resin one or spend trailblaze power for what they call it. Another weird improvement that I don't think anyone was asking for because the dailies in both Genshin and Star Rail's battle pass are so easy and negligible that like you don't need to do them. And most of them are going to complete themselves anyway. So basically removing them and just replacing with a spend resin one, which was like, oh, okay, great. I mean, like it's easier and that's good because we now have the repeatable battle pass over there you know sure does make it easier to get to that 70 and no i don't think that was because of the law because that change went live like seven days after those yep. laws were even proposed not even officially implemented as laws so it's it's highly unlikely unless they have an insider source that that may have been coming down the pipeline my thoughts on all of this is that honkai star rail and genshin impact are obviously both made by hoyoverse so that yep. gets them compared a lot they just assume that one change that is good for one they should just do in the other and absolutely for a lot of things they should like any product in any market or any sir if if you change one thing in one game then it should be easily applied to the other i 1 million percent agree now they are different teams but they should be able to coordinate the source files for all these changes but the thing is is that while i will have genshin impact's development team back a little bit can you really blame them for not wanting to change things knowing that their community is going to eat that shit up regardless like i mean let's just be real guys you know let's let's just be real like you're still gonna play genshin if you play genshin I, you know i mean that's the reality you know like, like nobody's gonna quit because you know like very little people are gonna quit because they're addicted they got addicted during covid and they can't stop it's not because the game is the best game ever it's not 
because they're addicted. They don't know what else to do, and they're just going to keep grinding. Why should the company need to work when the company, when, when the community is going to attack anybody who advocates for change? Right? She just keep doing what you're doing, Genshin. I mean, you're not going to lose any money. Who cares? I mean, just, just, just be real. I, I mean, for real, for real. They're not going to change the game. They're not. It's going to be the same. I learned this lesson two years ago. If you don't like Genshin for what it is right now, then quit because it's not going to change. Sorry. Maturing is realizing that Tectum was right and Genshin will never change. Right? So I get these videos are real fun, but like, okay. So they would need to add in an energy reserve system. They would need to add an extensive extensive end game. They would need to give players a way to grind where it actually feels meaningful. They would need to retroactively go throughout the story, cut out the majority of filler and almost 90% of Paimon's voice lines, right? And that's just off the top of my head. And I guarantee 90% of those things, there's no way they're going to do because now was the barrier to entry to get to current time in Genshin Impact story guys let's just be real just playing through the story is going to take somebody like 600 hours right and 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 80 percent of that is going to be Paimon recapping what just happened that we already know there's no way for them to fix it because they're they're so far into this Mickey Mouse clown fiesta that they're they're, they're barely keeping their head above water and they can't go back and fix all that shit because it's, it's borderline unfixable. The, the, the barrier to entry for new players is insane. Service improvement is driven by competition. If your product has no competition, you have almost no drive to improve because you have the entire True. market. Turn based gacha games are a dime a dozen. Star Rail's drive to improve is going to be significantly higher than Genshin's because Genshin just still, even after all these years, doesn't have much strong competition on the market currently. None. Now there are games on the horizon, and hopefully that drives Genshin to improve even more when they come to be. For now, we're going to have to settle with Hong Kong no. Star. They're just going to collect their profit and they leave. It doesn't matter. You know, it does. It doesn't matter. But now the problem is because people have like six to 700 hours deep into this game, they're going to have time sunk fallacy. They're not even going to try the new games. They're going to be cope and say Genshin's still better. And it's going to have the World of Warcraft Blizzard effect all over again. That's the truth, guys. Sorry. Our rail. And for a lot of the cases, we're going to have to deal with them getting stuff first, it would seem. Now, when Honkai Star Rail's anniversary comes along, that is going to be... Uh... That's going to be interesting. I don't see any situation where that plays out any differently than just the community going up in flames. Either for two days, it will go up in flames for two days. Google Classroom will be bombarded. And then we'll see on Genshin Twitter. Oh, man. I love Hu Tao so much. She's so beautiful. We've been dating for two years. Thinking about telling my parents about it. Like, nothing's going to change, man. They'll be upset about it for, like, a day. But but they have, they have no willpower. They have no strength. They have no attention span. And the other thing is, if China's not complaining, the company doesn't care. So the only way to actually get any amount of momentum, make a video, start a movement, and then move that shit over to Billy Billy and translate it. Because, sorry, guys, that's where the money's from. Star Rail gets a terrible anniversary to match Genshin's and people probably blame Genshin for it or it gets an amazing anniversary and Genshin fans are pissed. Either way, should be a fun time to just... For the Honkai Star Rail one year anniversary, we are getting a five star selector. Everybody knows it. It's not even cope to think it. We are getting a five star selector and it's going to be for the standard banner. And then Genshin Impact players are going to say, oh wow, cheapo, not from the limited time ones? Hell no. It'll be a Welt or a Clara or a Himiko. It'll be the same things that we get off the standard banner, right? But it's going to be huge. Okay, and there's going to be a whole bunch of videos on who to pick, who to pick, blah, blah, blah. But it, it, it's going to be the Himiko, blah, 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 Bronya. Yeah, everybody's going to have a Bronya, which is great. Because to be honest, she's borderline required in today's day and age sit back and watch everything burn so what was the feature that you really wanted that star rail got if any or maybe the other way around somehow because uh, i mean genshin has some stuff that star rail doesn't and let me know in the comments below like thank what? you for watching thank you to my patrons and my members for supporting me as always and i'll see you in the next one I, and i know people say the thing like oh genshin impact has this huge world that you can explore but like 
95% of the time, you're just walking around dead open space. It's really not that great with the same hill of churls that you kill in two hits, right? Like, it's insane. Like, oh, dude, bigger world equals more better. Not really. You know, I kind of just like going through the world once, enjoying it for what it is, and then just doing content that stimulates my brain. But that's just my opinion. Nah, that's not true. You can dislike it, but they do a good job at making the world not be empty. Okay. Hey, congratulations, man. I hope you keep playing Genshin Impact, but I'll be real. Besides a couple quests and, or besides a couple chests and primo gems, honest question, would you really be exploring that world if they're wasn't primo gems and chest every now and then and then you think about well why do i need the primo gems so bad and that's because okay well the company doesn't reward their players for anything or respect their players in any type of reward so the answer is probably not you know i mean breath of the wilds exploration and open world is objectively better because rather than exploring this big mountain to get like a five primo gem reward you get like a cool weapon or like a cool nice moment but i mean to count how many times i actually climbed up something and i felt rewarded besides the occasional oculus or chest i mean what really memorable thing have you found by exploration not really that much, at least within three years of content, but that's just my opinion. The times that you do want to explore towards cool areas, it's generally time-gated by an eight-hour quest that you don't want to do, but that's just my opinion. Not to be bitter, I'm only saying these things because I feel like they need to be said for the game to improve, but that's just my opinion.